Greetings and welcome to SmartwatchTix.com. I've got a box here which really beyond. This is the Z-Blaze New Beyond. First of all, five atmosphere water resistance. Secondly, built-in GPS. It's got an AMOLED screen and always on. Did I check all your hot buttons? Kind of sounds familiar, huh? We reviewed one from Redmi, the Watch 2, Chinese only. Had to do a lot of twists and turns to get it to work. Well, this is global, gang, and it's here. You can get it from the AliExpress uh, site for the Z Blaze official store in a really decent price range. And, um, yeah, we're going to take a look at this. You can get it with all kinds of different accessories. It's got its own charging uh, dock to it. And in addition to AliExpress, it's available at Banggood. Banggood's got the same thing. Now, it's a little bit more rectangular than square. The uh, Redmi Watch 2 is more square. This is a 1.75 inch, good size, large, you're going to see it, 390 by 450 pixel Always on AMOLED screen display, flash deal for about $65 over at Banggood. In terms of the uh, information, the specs, and the details, I've got a couple of sheets here for you. I know, I'm still printing this stuff out on paper. I like it. It, it just reminds me of my youth. <laughs> anyway, languages that are supported, features in this watch, different sport modes that are supported, and of course running and walking and cycling are gps supported from within the watch so you don't have to have your phone with you and in terms of a little bit larger display here's the listing from banggood um, and it gives you the same basic details just organized a little bit differently there's no um calling from this one no speaker no microphone because of its heavy duty 5 atm uh, waterproofing but you can get and reject calls uh, message reminders and things you have blood oxygen blood uh, uh, and heart rate but not blood pressure we're seeing a lot of the watches are getting away from trying to simulate the blood pressure because it's just uh, too hard to do it accurately so these fitness watches that are truly for fitness are are jumping in with giving you what you need heart rate and blood oxygen okay got these apps that are in there um, 12 nanometer high-end GPS uh, chip and it does acquire quickly and it's relatively accurate I got a little track I'll show you the uh, Google map on battery capacity Look at this. Use time 10 to 15 days. You can use continuous up to 40 hours. By the way, this is the only watch I've seen that you can set it to be always on. And I mean always on, not the ambient always on display, but always on. And you'll get a couple of days out of, uh, of use out of it, even with the display completely always on. Really, really interesting. Let's jump in and, and look at it. It's in this little sleeve here. When you open it up, it reveals the watch, and it's tethering to the F-Fit app. We'll take a look at that too briefly, show you some of the data on it. When we bring it out, it is really sweet. It's got a beautiful curved, dark black screen, one red button on the side, removable bands, red sensors, green sensors, all the diodes and things you need in the box itself now. Get in here. We've got a little message to your body. Dear body, work on a better you from Z Blaze. <laughs> That's kind of cute. Underneath here is the box with the uh, manual in here. Okay, we'll take a look at that. And then a bag that's got the charging dock. Now, unlike the magnetic connectors we've seen on many, many different watches, this one has the two pin connector that's also magnetic and you'll know if you've got the orientation wrong because it just won't work slap that in plug this in and charge it you're not going to be using this very often because you've got extremely good battery life on this one i don't know why it can cram gps and all the other goodies in here in a tiny little thin package like this and get such insane battery life when the um the Android watches are humongous. They've got a, a massive battery, and they only last a couple of days maximum, usually about a day. But nonetheless, it's the technology is here, and it's working. The Z Blaze Beyond User's Manual 
Here's the product information, basic stuff to start. You want to wear it about a finger up here, mostly for the um, diodes to get your accurate heart rate and uh, blood oxygen. Here's the uh, app QR codes. You could download that right here from um, taking a picture of them, I guess, with your phone. But what I recommend is either go to the Google Play Store and search for the F-Fit app or just use the link in the show notes down below and you can do it there. How to use, basic sliding left and right, the charging information, really simple stuff in the manual. The art of it comes when we actually get into it. There's how you replace the bands. They're super simple and any commercial available band, the right size for this, probably um, I'm not even going to guess. I'll try to put it in the show notes. 20 something, 22 maybe, 20 uh, millimeter. They're all standard sizes. And then FCC information. The other side should be Chinese, and it is. And we are good to go. Now, normally I tell you, I am going to put it together and charge it up, and we'll turn it on. Well, I've already done all that, and I've acquired data on it. So let's just keep moving. Press and hold the button on the side. It vibrated, comes up with the Z-Blaze logo, and boom, you're into a face. And this is a face I downloaded from the available faces that are on the uh, tethering app. Now you see it timed out quickly, so I'm going to get that changed here shortly. Here's heart rate. It's not doing it unless you actually tap to measure, but it is showing you the uh, the heart rate for from midnight to present with a scale along the side. Oh, that's just too bad. Let's. I'm going to fix that. I had it set for five seconds last night, so in case I checked the time, it would go off quickly. Now I've upped it to 20 seconds in the settings. We'll get there. You'll see how to do that. Here's blood oxygen. Doesn't do it continuously, kind of, sort of. It'll do it once an hour if you want. You can set it up for that. Tap to measure. And just to show you when we do tap to measure, I'll come back here. Tap to measure. There we go. Gives us a countdown once it held really goodly to your body. And you see it's using the red diode technology in here. The green diodes are being used when you're doing uh, heart rate. And they show up over here. Just so you know. Uh, don't need to go through all of that stuff. Measure. Cancel. Uh, just to... Um, because you see the data here already and the size of the digits. This is fun. This is last night's sleep time. The white line was awake and then you've got deep and light sleep and nothing else. Wake up time and sleep time and total. But in the app you get the breakdown of what all this means. One more and you can set whatever location on earth you want uh, to have your temperature and weather in Fahrenheit or centigrade all settleable from the app. You got a music player that will trigger and play the music out of your phone, not out of the watch. There's no Bluetooth connection for uh, playing and no speaker in here. Then you got your activity stuff, your um, number of calories goal, your step goal, and standing goal. How many times have you stood up and walked around uh, during the day? Or rated over a 12-hour period, if that's what you've set up. And back to the overall watch face, a uh, long press and hold. If you don't move too much, we'll get you in here. There's one, one custom face. You can add one custom face out of many. This is a stock face. It's kind of a photograph on here. Real sensitive screen. There we go. I want you to see here the size of the bezel and the fact that it supports animation and has kind of a throwback to Apple, doesn't it? That's a shoreline. Pretty cool. Date, time, all of that. That is a stock watch face, folks. Then you've got this digital one here. You've got this nice big green analog. Good time to show it to you on, right? Before we get into the other aspects of it. Slides in, nice TPU band, get it nice and snug. There we go. And now you got yourself a beautiful dress watch with this nice green analog watch face. My 20 seconds are up, okay. And I think we got one more colorful, fun little face right here. So those are available. They're in the app um, and the stock ones we've already shown you. When you swipe down, you get notifications pushed from your phone if there are any. Usually you get that when you swipe up. So it's reversed here. Come this way and now we get all the things like a flashlight that you can turn on and off. You can actually password protect this watch and lock it. Um, I believe, or is that just a screen lock? 
Oh, that's just a screen lock, sorry, for swimming and stuff. So now this you can't use it at all. You have to push the side button and to unlock press and hold the watch button. Press and hold. There, we're unlocked. Okay, so we're learning. That's a screen lock. Do not disturb. This is your uh, wake for five minutes. Now, good, I'm going to leave that on. It's going to force the watch to stay on for five minutes and not turn off. And then this is your power savings, which would probably override what we just set. And here's overall settings. Watch faces we looked at. Brightness is a control here. We're at level three. There's level one, nice and low. And at level five, AMOLED screen, easy to see outdoors. It's really, really nice. I'm just going to do it for level three for our review. Always on display, you can have the information screen to be either a uh, analog pointer or a digital dial. We'll show you those when we get to that point. And you can have an activation time either all day, meaning it'll, it will never go off the watch. It'll go into the ambient always on mode or back again to regular. Uh, or you can set it timed. And I've got it from 7 p.m. 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. is when it's on, reverses off. So at night it will actually go off and I don't have to do anything to change that. I could set it like if I go to bed at 10 o'clock to automatically go off then. Whatever you like. That's all available there. Wake set. Settings. Got my screen timeout from 5 seconds to 20. Oh, I don't want to change it back to 5. 20. And twist your wrist or raise to wake. We can turn that on so when you twist it, it'll come on. And then always on. This is what I was telling you about. If you turn that on, it will always stay on. It will never go off. It'll never go to always on display. It'll just be on. Just like we activated that five minutes on, but this is constant always on. So if you're one of those folks that's just going to charge your watch every night, you can actually turn that always on on and leave the watch running because you'll get it easily a day to two of uh, life out of it that's in the wake settings okay and where are we i think when i changed that 20 seconds it took me out of the five minutes on so we've got 20 seconds to talk wake settings system settings reboot power off all the standard stuff regulatory qr code and device info it's named beyond for when you're trying to bluetooth tether it that's everything in settings and that's what we got to by swiping up, right? We got to heart rate, blood oxygen, sleep time, weather, and music, and back again to activity. And of course, it's uh, circular, so you can go around the, all the way around. So we looked at everything you can get to through touching and tweaking, except for pressing the button. Come in here, and now you get all of your activities. The first one are all your different workouts. And again, this has onboard GPS, so your outdoor uh, activities, walking, uh, cycling, and so forth are supported with GPS. Other ones that don't give you distance measurement um, are in here as well, but it won't turn on the GPS. You've got all these things, including Zumba and dance, Pilates, yoga. Interesting, I'm not seeing swimming in there. I thought we had swimming on this one because it is a 5 ATM watch, right? Well, that's that's interesting. Okay, here are uh, results. This is on board the watch, the results of a little outdoor walk I did with GPS turned on. Here's all of the basic data that you get that's shown on the watch. There's more on the actual app, including the track that's shown on the app, but you can actually look at your previous results there. Here's today's step count data and your goals we saw in one of the cards, heart rate, sleep time, blood oxygen, right? Yeah, uh, we saw those already on the cards. Okay, come back here. Now you got yourself a, a stopwatch that cannot run in the background. So we say exit, okay, oops, that's our sleep time. Here's our countdown timers on this one. The music player, we already saw that. Then this is setting, uh, oh, we're on the stopwatch, sorry. All the way up, okay. Then you've got weather that you've got in your area. It's the same card that we already saw. Oh, with more uh, forecast information listed here. That's good. You've got, a breath 
exercise. You can set it for one to three minutes and you can change your rate and inhale and exhale. And we've seen that before. Um, it's pretty cool. And it vibrates to let you know so you can close your eyes if you want to. Notifications, find your phone, the flashlight, and we're back to overall settings over here. Okay, let's uh, take a look at the app now and how it tethers with this. We're using the FFIT app. Here it is in the Google Play Store. Download it, install it, set it up, and you get into the card or the first uh, screen. Uh, once you're connected, we're in on the Beyond, and this is the model number of this one. I can check that mark and hit the check mark, and it'll uh, resequence and uh, synchronize and bring in any new data. You see, I've got a chart of every hour with uh, barcodes of my steps, and I go into it and I get a more detailed view of the number of steps that I took per hour, how I'm doing against my overall 8,000 step um, target. And I've got that listed in here for other days. I've done yesterday and today on here, so I've got a couple of, of entries for each of these. Here's that outdoor walk I just did. I could start exercising right here from the uh, phone if I wanted to, but if I've done it without the phone around and then I've transferred the data, including the GPS track, I can look at it over here. There we go. And that's the summary of the duration, the time it happened, the calories, the average speed, everything. And then I got the motion track, which I'm going to zoom way in because it's a shot of uh, a track of me walking around my house. You can kind of see the outline of the house. And then here's the overall track. So its accuracy is probably a circle of 50 feet or so fairly reasonable. Uh, I didn't do this kind of zigzagging, but I was walking basically around here. But it doesn't extend out of this zone. It's a Google map, so if I zoomed out and out and out, you'd see wherever you are. And if you've got a linear track, of course, it'll automatically scale to that linear track, show you beginning and ending, and you can zoom in and see where you are uh, along that, uh, that overall track. You got uh, your heart rate information in here during your workout and the distribution in percentages. I was doing all of this in these warm-up fat and aerobic zones. There's pace, a chart for that, a pace for caden a, a chart for cadence, and uh, a speed chart, and calories. This is one of the most detailed in terms of data um, tracking apps that I've seen. Uh, for a, such a simple little watch, with a GPS module built into it and an insane battery life and an AMOLED screen and a really good price. It's decent. Now, I'm not trying to sell you on it. I'm just excited about it. I really am. I get it really turned on with these watches. All right, that was the walking. Here's heart rate. You can see while I was doing the exercise, it was peaking up a little bit, and that's the heart rate chart. And, of course, I did... Uh, a little bit yesterday, so that's on there as well. Goes right through midnight, picks up the next day, and carries on. Blood oxygen now, it's only giving you readings when you actually do a manual test. So I did a couple of tests, and that's the current most recent one that shows on the screen, but you're not getting a chart of uh, blood oxygen every sequence of time. It's just individualized testing of blood oxygen. Be nice to see a little bit more detail on that, but honestly, you really don't need it, um, you know, unless you're in a in a situation where you think you may be having a sleep apnea event or um, your health is, is compromised somehow or you're really seriously exercising hard and you want to make sure you don't go into anaerobic. But even then, because you have to hold real still when you do these measurements, you can't get accuracy. So the trade-off is you come to a complete stop, you activate the test, you wait for 20 seconds or so, and you get a real reading. And I think that's partly why they've moved away from doing continuous blood oxygen. Here's last night's sleep stuff. Doesn't tell you the increments when you touch the chart, but it does tell you the guide up here. I was wide awake then, but uh, deep and light sleep are shown. Percentages, sleep target, and kind of a talk about sleep quality, but it's not giving you a magic number. A lot of them will give you a number uh, representing your sleep quality. This uh, particular app band watch combination doesn't do that, but it does give you your overall sleep chart. And that's it for the cards. You get into device. 
Here's the device itself. These are some of the different uh, dials that you can add to it. They're categorized by pointers and simplicity and business. The fancy dazzle color ones are here. You get in here and you see you got a whole bunch more. Uh, lots and lots of options to fit any kind of style uh, personality. An album dial is one where you can import your own picture, move the digital stuff around, even change its orientation, mess around with the colors, customize it any way you want, and create your own synchronized dial on here. Only one of them now is going to show up. The other ones are stock, uh, but you can transfer one dial over. And of course, at any time, you can change it as long as you're tethered to the app. Background permissions, notifications, continuous heart rate monitoring. You saw that. We can interface with Google Fit. Basic, basic stuff, more settings in terms of weather, location, left or right hand, imperial or metric, and centigrade or Fahrenheit for the uh, weather, and other basic data to help you out with this. Care is if you're tethered to other friends and working together with them in a buddy system, and mine is about you, uh, your individual personal information. I register as female so I can check if it has uh, period tracking. This one does not support that. There's none, nothing in here for uh, period tracking. Um, the rest of it can be changed, actually, uh, when you change the units, so you don't have to be in centimeters and kilograms if you want to input your height and body weight in something more familiar. And you have a skin, a skin color selection that will improve the accuracy overall of the sensors on here and getting you more um, data that's correlated to your particular body type and style. You can change maps. A map doesn't work in the United States. Google does, and it does a nice job uh, showing you on, on the uh, app what your track is from here. Now, the last thing I didn't show you is that always on display. Here's the actual display. It goes out. A couple of seconds later, it flashes back into the uh, ambient display. And this is what will show always if you're not in your actual watch face. I've activated the twist your wrist to see the time. I set it to five second timeout and I've got the always on display as well. So a nice combination when you're just doing your daily activities. I'm gonna show you the analog one, but first I wanna compare it briefly with the um, Redmi Watch 2. I told you the size is a little bit larger. This is more uh, contoured for a lady's wrist. That's what the always on screen looks like on this one a little bit brighter a little bit larger digits digitally and overall um, they're very very similar in their effectiveness um, and if you watch both reviews carefully you can see what the differences are between them um, but other than that they're uh, they're both a, a really good choice if you want gps in a watch amoled screen and always on so let's take a look at the um the analog display in Always On. Ta-da! Oh, not analog. Well, no, this doesn't support analog, just the one digital uh, Always On display. But this one you can switch if you like, and you have little pointers, so if it's dark, you can orient which way you are uh, looking. Also, if you've noticed, you have your step count on uh, this this new Z Blaze Beyond, whereas the Redmi Watch 2, you just basically get the date. But you do have a couple of things here. You can double tap to turn this one on. You can set that. You can cover it to go back into ambient mode. Those are two features with this one that you don't have with that one. So do check out both reviews if you uh, are looking for a GPS based AMOLED screen watch with always on display. And if you settle in on the Z Blaze Beyond, well, you can pick it up through AliExpress at their official store. Got a link in the show notes for you. And hopefully I can get you a coupon discount as well. We're looking in the neighborhood of about 65 to $75, rounding off, which is uh, less money than the uh, Watch 2, the Redmi Watch 2, um, but different capabilities. Or you can pick it up from Banggood for about 65 on flash sale right now. Either way, it's a good watch. We'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching, gang.